All right, it is time to talk about what we do when our VPS goes down. Our VPS is a virtual private server, uh, which means that we can run the robots on a, uh, a remote location that we can access from multiple computers. And it's basically like a computer in a different location, a, di a computer in a different place, like housed in a server farm somewhere in North Dakota or something. But we can log into it from other computers. So I use a VPS for trading the robots because it means I don't have to worry about my computer being connected to the internet all the time or being on all the time. However, there are some issues with using a VPS. Uh, there are minor issues as long as you uh, keep track of what's going on. And sometimes we don't. Like me, for instance, I am very lazy about keeping track of what's going on with my virtual private server. So sometimes I have a little bit of a headache when I <laughs> come back from the weekend and find out that my virtual private server had restarted and I didn't know about it. Like this weekend, for instance. So we're going to talk about what you do when uh, your virtual private server goes down. Mine went down not because Microsoft Azure is not stable. It is very stable, and I still highly recommend them. However, um, the uh, Microsoft, it's <laughs> Microsoft operating system itself sometimes updates, and when it updates, it will restart your server or restart your computer which it does the same thing with your computer. And uh, MetaTrader 4 doesn't just automatically come back up. It has to be brought up manually if your server or if your computer restarts. So that's the, that's the issue that I had this weekend. My virtual private server went down uh, for updates, and it came back up all right, but MetaTrader 4 didn't, and I didn't realize it until just this morning, and it is Monday. So there were a couple of trades that I had to close out uh, manually because they were in a uh, in, they were in profit. Um, fortunately, there weren't any trades that um, that I missed profit on. So it's not like had the robots been open, I would have taken profit on a bunch of trades and they would have closed. Uh, but there is, ah, here we go, the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar trade. So I had two trades open from the moving average divergence robot, the MAD robot, and they had actually gone significantly into profit, which is kind of cool. So I actually made uh, $4.32 on that trade, which is nice. I mean, if the robot had been trading it, I wouldn't have made four dollars and thirty two cents I would have made a dollar thirty but that's still a little bit scary because it could have very easily gone against me now when I made that little bit of profit that four dollars and thirty two cents I decided to close out the British pound New Zealand dollar trade as well now the British pound New Zealand dollar trade had only gone into profit 23 cents so uh, but I wasn't worried about that because I just made four dollars and thirty two cents on the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. So I had made, you know, like three trades worth of profit from this one trade set due to an accident. <laughs> uh, so I wasn't too terribly uncomfortable with just closing out a British pound, New Zealand dollar trade just so that I could start getting back on track with the rest of the currency pairs. Now, as you can see, these are in a little bit of drawdown, not much. Considering I've made in profit more than I am in drawdown right now, so that's not a big deal, anyways. Um, but I, I would really, uh, I really like dumping some of the trades, if possible, before I start everything back up again. So the profit that I had made was overall almost five dollars. Uh, from both of those so I started looking for other trades and there aren't really any other trades to close out at the moment I actually kind of like this euro Australian dollar trade so I'm sticking with it uh, because a sell on the euro Australian dollar is probably going to go pretty good 
Uh, and if it doesn't and it goes against me, then I know that it'll only go up a little ways before correcting and then I'll be able to get back in and it'll be, this one will be just fine. That's why I'm not concerned about the Euro Australian dollar. Now the Euro US dollar, that one was only in one buy trade. So when I put the robot back on and I was using the insanity robot on the Euro US dollar, it actually immediately placed another trade. And uh, I'm hoping to start seeing some profit from that relatively soon. And hopefully get out of this Euro US dollar trade pretty quickly. Uh, okay, so when your server goes down, here is what you need to do. Do not panic. I know that's a do not when I said this is what you need to do, but the first thing to do is to not panic. You're going to want to panic. You're going to think, oh no, I just, I just got screwed on my VPS and now all of my trades are against me, but don't panic. My first instinct was to panic too, but I didn't. What I did was I went through each individual currency pair that had a trade open or two trades or whatever, and I looked at where they are now, so the Australian dollar, Japanese yen, and when looking at it like this, from this perspective, it's not that big of a deal. The the sell the second sell trade is not that far into uh, into a loss. It's only five dollars in a drawdown right now, which means it only has to come back just a little bit in order for it to close at profit. So I'm not concerned about this trade. Then I looked at the Australian dollar, US dollar trade. That's a buy trade. And it's running the moving average divergence robot, the mad trader robot. Now with the mad trader robot, it is very highly likely that it will close at profit soon. The mad trader robot in backtesting hardly ever held trades longer than a day or two. And when it did hold it longer than a day or two, it was only for a week or two. It may seem counterintuitive to allow a robot to be in trades that draw down, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 dollars or something or more, only to get a dollar 30 in profit. But considering how quickly most of the trades close out, you can pretty much bet that it's going to, right after closing these trades at profit, uh, take a whole bunch more trades and close them all out really quickly. So we wait for this one to come back around. Because if I closed it right now, that is three trades worth of profit. We'd have to place three more profitable trades just to get back this loss. So we don't want to do that. We want to wait until this comes back around into profit and then takes a dollar 30 of profit and then continues placing more trades which close out really quickly most of the time so i'm not worried about the australian dollar us dollar trade it may be down by four dollars and 38 cents but it hasn't placed a second trade yet so once it places a second trade it should go pretty fast from there so i put the robot back on using the same settings i used before it will pick up where we left off and it will wait for a second trade and it will place that second trade in the same direction the robot reads this first trade and then sets all of its own variables accordingly so it will be good to go uh, very soon now the euro australian dollar that one let's see it placed that trade. That trade was only just placed uh, Thursday. And it's a sell trade. And you know, I actually really like that sell trade on the Euro Australian dollar. Yep. Uh, so if it goes way against me, then yeah, sure, it'll place a second trade and then it'll come back down and make profit. That's cool. But for right now, I, I just put the Levels Trader robot back on there with the settings I used before, and we're going to wait uh, for it to take profit. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, the Euro New Zealand dollar, we've talked about this one a little bit already. The Euro New Zealand dollar, I've actually been in these trades for, oh, yeah, just since last Wednesday. That's not a big deal. 
Uh, the Euro New Zealand dollar trades have been in since last Wednesday. Um, well, Wednesday for one of them and Thursday for the other. And they they look like they're doing worse than they are. Yes, we are down forty two dollars. And we're only going for like a dollar thirty of profit. But again, the moving average divergence robot is highly successful, highly consistent. When this trade closes out, which I am very, very confident that it will, once it closes out, it will um, start placing a whole bunch more trades. I've actually made quite a bit on the Euro New Zealand dollar in the past. There's a good trade. There's a good trade. There's a good trade. There's a good trade. Yeah, so the Euro New Zealand dollar, it it does have a tendency to sometimes get stuck in trades for a little while. Like this one was stuck in a trade for a week, but it came back around and I made a dollar 70. Oh, huh, that's cool. Yeah. So the Euro New Zealand dollar, I really actually like because then it just places another trade and then it places another trade, then it places a, another trade. And right now it's just it's just going to sit in these trades for a, a couple more days, probably. You just give it time and it makes its uh, it makes its way back around. In the meantime, forty two dollars of, uh, of drawdown is not exactly not exactly life threatening or account threatening. We're not concerned about that. We still have plenty of margin left, and our margin level percent thing, which I actually don't have any idea what this means, but I know the higher the better. 1,030 margin percent level, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's move, along. Let's move right along. The Euro US dollar, I think we already covered that. We're looking at a uh, buy trade on this with the Insanity robot, and it placed another one right when I put the robot back on the chart because the Insanity robot is pretty insane and it just keeps placing more trades over and over again and it makes a lot of money, it's cool. British Pound, Japanese Yen. Now this one is the Widowmaker. Uh, the trade itself that I'm in right now, that's not so bad, but this particular currency pair, I refer to as the Widowmaker because it uh, it's a lot of fun when it's when you're using it, but it uh, it it can it can cause some serious problems, kind of like those wooden ladders that you use, uh, that uh, that we call widowmakers as well, because it uh, you stand on a one of those rickety old wooden ladders and it has a tendency to fall down or break. Or, anyways, the British pound, Japanese yen does really well with the moving average divergence robot as long as you are conservative with it. So right now it's actually quite a ways against us on this second or on this first trade, but we haven't placed a second trade yet. This is why we're using the Mad Trader, the Moving Average Divergence Trader, because it is more conservative and more consistent and more selective about what trades it places. You don't want to use the Jap the British Pound Japanese Yen on like the Levels robot where it's not quite as selective, it just kind of goes for whatever it can, and it uh, it tries to get out quickly, but the, the British Pound Japanese Yen, it can just move way fast, and then never really come back um, to the same level that you want it to come back to. But for the Moving Average Divergence Trader, it's going to be selective about finding that second trade. It'll find the second trade, and then it'll come back into profit relatively quickly. That's why we use such a small trade size on our first trade, one micro lot. In fact, I would recommend not ramping up the British pound Japanese yen uh, trade sizes at all, like ever, or at least not until uh, you've already maxed out the number of currency pairs you want to use and already increased the trade size of all the other ones. The British pound Japanese yen is just a, it's a novelty currency pair for me because I like, I don't know, I've always kind of liked it, but I, I, I wouldn't recommend using larger trade sizes with this. And I'd recommend sticking with the conservative settings on this robot, uh, on this currency pair. 
So it'll look for the second trade. It's already looking for it. It's waiting until it finds a good setup, and then it'll play second trade, and then we'll get out, and it'll be profitable. It'll be cool. In the meantime, we'll just sit here and watch this one go. I'm not going to close this one out because we've got a long way before it starts to feel threatening to my account in any way, shape, or form. Now, you're probably wondering, what is the deal with this get me out robot right here? Now, these trades on the Euro New Zealand dollar were placed by the moving average divergence robot. I'm still using the original one. So it still says sitting in the comment section, which I called it sitting because I was just sitting around when I made this robot. I was sitting around at the uh, at a, a marketing conference thing in San Diego uh, almost two years ago now, and it uh, yeah it was just I was really bored, so I uh, created a robot during one of the lectures, and I just I actually called it the sitting around robot because I was just sitting around. But anyways, the moving average divergence robot is what placed these trades, but. They've been in for almost a week now, so I'm I'm using this this robot called Get Me Out, which I created specifically for the purpose of getting out of trades without placing new trades. Because I would like to place the robot on this chart myself after these trades have closed. Now, is that necessary? No. No. If you had just put the or if I had just put the mad trader robot right back on this chart with the same settings, everything would have been perfectly fine. But for right now, what I want to do is wait for these to close, and then I want to go place the robot back on there myself. That's all. That's what this Get Me Out robot is. I programmed that. It's really, really simple robot. And if I get enough people commenting on it, then I'll upload it to the robots course because uh, it's a, it's, it's not a robot for placing trades. It's just a robot for getting out of trades, uh, whether they be. Uh, um, manual trades, discretionary trades, or robotic trades, or whatever. It doesn't look for the magic number. It just looks at any trade that is on this particular currency pair that you place it on. It counts up the profit from both trades, or all the trades, and then it closes once it gets to a certain amount of profit. And then it doesn't do anything. It just sits there and waits for you to remove it from the chart and put something else up. That's all. That's it. That's what I like to do. And as far as keeping track of my trades as they're going, I usually use smarttrader.com. That way I can see my trades that I've placed um, or that the robots placed. I can see which ones are placing those trades, uh, when they've been open, how much profit we're in, and everything from my computer or from my iPhone or my iPad or whatever. Uh, so... Yeah, and it integrates with a bunch of brokers too, which is pretty awesome. Sorry, I just I've been playing around with Smart Trader all weekend, and it also does uh, robots, which is pretty cool. You can trade robots on this platform. I just don't have mine built for it yet, but once I do, you'll find out about it. Anyways, that's all for now. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know, and have a nice rest of your trading week.